Hi everybody, once again we are working on a series of illustrations for a game called Rignar. For this one I am doing the Elixir, which is a one-time use potion in this game. And it will restore a spell, or refresh a spell. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the screen. I've already, f I just finished the, the line work before I started the stream. Um, but basically what I did is, uh, you saw there my uh, my Google photo, um, just uh, account open in my web browser. So what I do is I, I, uh, I grab it from there, paste it into paint.net after I set up a new document, enlarge it to the size that I want, and then uh, do all my digital ink over top of it so it goes from from this to this okay and now we are going to color it so first thing i do is go to my magic wand tool i've made sure that my outline is completely touching. It goes all the way around. And then I'm going to hold control and select all of the pieces that I want to be transparent. Then control I to invert that selection. Then control shift X will crop my canvas and all of my layers uh, to that selection. So you can see there's my initial sketch and we're just going to delete that now and I've got this white layer which gives me a very easy way of selecting just the object itself I'm going to duplicate that white layer and double click on it and rename it color this is where I'm going to do all of the coloring so the elixir a color that I kind of associate with magic is purple but i don't want to go with a really 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 bright purple i'm going to kind of start with something dark and just fill the entire thing in just so i'm not coloring over white this kind of helps me get colors um, that aren't quite as obnoxious uh, or bright so let's start with the leather on this and basically all i do is paint in a barrier between the color that I want to fill and the color that I want to leave or make a different color and then I can just use the paint bucket tool and fill it in this makes coloring um, just coloring in the flats like this a very fast process Okay, and then I think I'm going to want some gold or bronze. just outline this piece now I can always zoom in and just go in and tidy things up And then this bottom section will also be gold. And 
And K on the keyboard, I can grab colors from the screen. So I can grab that purple color and then go back in here and just tidy up. I'm holding down the space bar, just like in Photoshop, to pan around the canvas. These areas right here actually are going to be cut out. I'll, I'll take care of that in just a second. Alright, but I think these are going to be more of a steel color. Like some metal rings somehow affixed to the side of this container. Alright, I'll go back to my ink layer. We'll go to the magic wand tool. And I want to select just right in here and right in here. And then I'll go back to the color layer. Press delete. Also in my white layer. Press delete. Okay. Um, I think that I kind of want, I guess I want this to be just some kind of different material. go back in and clean up a little bit. Doesn't take very long. All right, and that is all of the flat colors worked out. I'll create a new layer and I'm gonna call this shading. All right, and let's go back to that. Make it multiply blending mode 120 on the opacity. And then I'm gonna go to my dark purple that I use for all of my shadows. And what I can do is just draw in where these shadows are going to go, and then I can fill them in, just like I did with the color. What I'm going to do is focus just on half of this and then just for time's sake because this illustration is pretty much symmetrical I can just focus on coloring or doing the shading here for for half of it and then just duplicate it and then flip it. So I'm I'm focusing the this uh, the shadow the shading on the sort of lower 
half of different elements. And kind of in the middle, so if the light was coming from the top down, a little bit of it might wrap around the sides. But things above other things are going to obscure light from hitting whatever's below. Okay, and I can also go in with the eraser and just erase the shadow without ruining my color or line art because it's on a separate layer. Okay, let's try this. So I'm gonna just select half of it. Copy, create a new layer, paste, go to layers, uh, the layers menu, flip horizontally and then I'm gonna merge it down. Okay, and it took on the properties of my layer underneath, so. Yeah, that worked great and very fast. That should be the shading all sorted, so we'll create a new layer. This is gonna be highlights. Double click. Call it highlights, we'll put it on screen mode. 120 for the opacity, click OK, go back to my brush, and then I go for a light yellow for the highlights. I can also just go back in here and make sure that I have my object selected so I can I can color outside the lines without worrying about it. The highlights I'll focus more on the top ridges of the different elements, different faces, and the planes. The areas that might catch the light. Also to sort of over-exaggerate and emphasize the edges of things so that it reads very clearly because this is for a card. That's going to be a 3x5 card. Um, I want it to be very clear what it is when it sits on the table. So it's Partly my style and partly for uh, utility that everything has quite a bit of contrast.
One of the things that I really enjoy about this technique is that I can spend more of my time uh, actually doing the drawing and the coloring rather than color hunting. I'm trying to get the right uh, shade or tone of these colors. I don't need to you know, try to find darker versions of these colors that I like, and then be very, very careful about where, I, you know, where I, I have to like color each individual, or I'd have to like shade and highlight each individual color separately. And I don't particularly like that. One, it just seems a little too clinical. Um, and two, I. I really want to have a, a mood, sort of an overall tone over the whole piece. So see how this purple, it looks more gray because I've added yellow on top of it in that screen blending layer mode. Okay. I can also add uh, a highlight in the shadow, but essentially creating the illusion of, of reflected light. that I think that's good for the highlights again I'm gonna select half of it here control C create a new layer control V go to my layers menu flip horizontally and merge it down there we go and I'll just go in here and kind of clean this up a little bit because some areas that I don't actually want to be symmetrical. But it's still a lot faster just copying and flipping it. Okay, the rest of this looks pretty good. I think I want to put just a little bit of a highlight underneath these kind of glyphs. 
One just so they stand out a little bit more and look like maybe they're they're sealed in the wax or the maybe this thing is covered in or in the actual glass or pottery or whatever whatever material this happens to be made out of. I just want it to look like it's more part of it. And I think I'm gonna go to my color layer again and then select global fill and get all of the purple. And I kind of just want to play with the lightness, the hue, the saturation. Maybe go a little bit more purple. Let's see. Before, yeah, that's pretty dark. see things better okay I'm gonna create another layer above my ink layer this is gonna be the glow um, before I do that on top of my highlight layer this is gonna be shines so I like to have a few just really really bright completely white highlights especially on things like metal or water, anything that's supposed to be glossy, shiny, or wet. Um, so it just kind of emphasizes the shininess, creates even more contrast. Let me go back to my shines layer. And I think helps communicate the texture of the material as well, at least the intention, the, uh, the illusion. So I'm going to keep these really, really bright highlights, mostly just on the metal. And just right at the very tops and edges of things. Maybe a couple in the glass. Not too much though. Okay, then above that, actually above the the ink layer, what I do is I switch to a very large brush and take my hardness all the way down, turn my anti-aliasing back on, then I make my glow layer color dodge, blending mode. My opacity is something like 150. We'll see how that works. And then I'm using a light yellow again. The same yellow I use for the highlights. And what this will do is, is kind of help give this thing a more magical uh, looking effect. Um, 
especially on the metal, this will also help it feel a little bit more metallic. Um, makes these shines really, really pop out. So I'm going to try to keep it away from things like the, the leather. I want that to be a, a nice shine right there. Keep it mostly on the metal and, you know, sort of on the, on the edges of this, uh, of this glass container, sort of indicating that this is filled with something very, um, magical. That's my glow layer. That's with it. That's without. All right, we're going to save this. This is going to be a treasure that you can pick up. Elixir. Elixir will refresh one spell so that you can use it again in the same combat. We'll also save this as a PNG. There we go. That looks nice. Just like to check it out, make sure it's cropped edge to edge. All right, so save it. It's going to flatten it. Um, usually, I'll immediately undo that and then save it again uh, as the paint.net file, just to make sure that all my layers and things are, like that are saved. All right, so. Go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to open up my Google Drive. This is where I'm doing all of the layout and design. I'm using Google Slides. I turn my touch pad back on. There we go. And I'll open up my card layouts here. This is just a Google Slides document. And I like to just, I like to go ahead and get the, you know, once I do the illustration, I'll go ahead and set up the card just to kind of have a, a finished product. So I'll take something that's similar as far as the the card layout. I'll duplicate that. So I'm, in this case I'm using the Potion of Healing. I'm going to duplicate this. Slide. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of the top one and the bottom one. Okay. Select the middle one. Ungroup everything. And now let's get our new illustration in here first. Go to the treasures. Elixir color PNG. We can just drag and drop it in here. Looks good. I need to size it down a little bit. I'm going to make it about the same size as the 
potion. I just moved it down so that I could select the potion and delete it. Um, I've got this other PNG in here that has this bit of a glow. Actually, I'm just going to cut that for now so I can paste it right back into place. I'm going to go to Format Options because I don't want this glow to be red. Um, let's just try yellow. That's cool. So I'm using some of the, like the recolor features in, uh, Google Slides. So this is going to... Refresh one spell during combat. Elixir. Single use. Okay. Let's check that out. So we've got the potion and the elixir. I'm going to select all of that, group it, control, alt, and G. And then I can drag a couple of duplicates so that the card or this, this page is set up then for print. And there it is. Thank you everybody for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. We use paint.net and Google Slides. Those are the only two tools that we use to, to create this card. Um, all the illustration done in paint.net. It's a free and open source. Software. And uh, Supports layers, blending modes. Check it out at uh, getpaint.net. And then I'm using Google Slides here to do all my card layouts. It's coming along. I'm really happy with this. All right. Thanks again. Bye for now.